So we've got two majors, two minors, two dominants and two tonics and a simple four chord progression. And that's how I think of things as a keyboard player, as a chord player. Well, I would, I don't see that, Tim. I mean, because as a monophonic player, I look at the progression, and it's one down a half tone to seven, and then up to the third of the tonic, which is E minor, and up to the dominant, and then I, I'd make a melody on on that type of thing. G'day girls, I'm Tim. And I'm Don. And together, together we, we are My Aim, the Improvised line. line. And an innovative, innovative method. Welcome to our channel guys. We're all about playing music, improvisation and the cycle of movable keys. So what have we got today, Don? Well, I put a new chart up on your music stand. And today we're going to use a progression a one, seven, three, five and see how that sounds. So what's interesting about this chord progression is we've got two major chords, C and G, and we've got two minor chords, or a diminished, which is a minor chord, B diminished, and E minor. When you play through the chord progression twice, you'll be going from the G7, which is the fifth, the dominant, to C, which is the tonic. And the same thing happens in the minor. You're going from the B, which is the dominant, played as the seventh, to E, which is the tonic. So we've got two majors, two minors, two dominants and two tonics and a simple four chord progression. And that's how I think of things as a keyboard player, as a chord player. Well, I would... I don't see that, Tim. I mean, because as a monophonic player, I look at the progression and it's one, down a half tone to seven, and then up to the third of the tonic, which is E minor, and up to the dominant. And then I, I'd make a melody on, on that type of thing. So we're thinking along two, and when they come together, that's what causes improvisation. So as a monophonic player, what you're saying is you're going to take the naming note, the tonic note of each chord, and you're going to make a melody out of that. That's the way I, that when I see progression, I look at the direction I can make a line. So if you played the first notes of each chord in the progression, see what they sound like, Tim. Now, if you've moved that down and play it the same fingering in B, And then move it up to E. And then to G. Now you can see the, the melody line moving up and down and then you try to make a, you try to make a melody out of that.
effect is just by taking the first notes of each chord and just play those notes, can you make a tune out of that? And I think you can, because that gives you that gives you the the flow of a melody. Whereas as a polyphonic player, as a chord player, I see the whole chord and decide what I'm going to play. If I'm doing piano and I've got to put a bass note in the left hand, well that automatically takes care of usually the naming note and sometimes the fifth note of the chord. Right. So if I can go... Right? Okay. Uh, and then if I'm making it as a seventh chord, I can play the whole seventh chord. Or I can leave the third out of it. Or I can invert it. Leave the third out again. It's interesting because it could be major or minor. Take leave the fifth out. I can't think like that, Tim. So I've got to think that's how I'm thinking. And then, because I'm trying to make up a melody. I've got to then put all of that together. So if I'm playing a bass note, I would do just a simple ballad. And all I've done is play the chords. I haven't created a melody yet. Although there's one starting to come out there. So if I use that as an introduction, something like that, this is why we do ballad because it's simple and you can think, gives you time to think. So simple ballad bass line is one, five and then the octave. And you can play it. into the E minor. And, and the other good trick is always playing thirds, because the third always works. All your chords are built on thirds, so a third in a melody as a harmony is a really simple, easy, and by gee, it's nice. Your chord, your bass line, and the tune. Well, it's a completely different world, isn't it? You know, I mean, uh, as a mo as a monophonic player, I've I've just constructed a single line. A single that, line. That's what you can do on a trumpet. It's just a trumpet, a saxophone, or whatever. It's just blow a single note. Yeah. So we'll stick to the same formula using two uh, a chord for two bars. And uh, I'll play it through twice for 16 bars. Oh, right. Okay. And in, in an easy ballad style, uh, just make a tune up as we go.
me off my chair. <laughs> um, what I was going to say was, um, mm. oh, I hope that helps. Yeah, so that's a bit of a guide as to what goes through. That's why when we do these videos, we play the chords, you can hear it. And we always do a ballad improvisation because then you can hear the chord progression. You can pick up a little bit of a melody that might be coming through from the inversions of the chords that you're using. And then you can play around with that on the second time through. Ballad is so simple and easy to do that. That then opens your mind up to playing your rag times, your jazz, blues, country. Whatever genre you want to play. Or your Latin American yeah, they're all the same, because they're all 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, or even if you want to convert it to a waltz. <laughs> Makes it nice and easy. <laughs> so again, we're going to use this 8-bar progression uh, in another genre. Have you got any ideas what you'll do today, Tim? So perhaps I thought we'd look at ragtime today. Yeah, can you describe ragtime, Tim? So ragtime's got dotted eighth notes in it and a nice solid four counts per bar. Okay, take it away. <laughs> other questions you can post them below or contact us via our website at myaim.com.au. Thanks very much for watching My Aim, the improvised line and innovative method and we'll catch you guys next week with more music information. See ya! And they're all transposable like you just make up uh, a little theme of two bars and then transcribe it into the next two. Yeah. And I think that's enough for the moment, isn't it?